tell us, Dr. Rivera, a little bit about how you designed the course. What will the student study? How's it set up? Are there labs? What, what kind of excitement are they getting ready for? Yeah, so this, I, I felt it was very important to set the foundation as we've been talking about. So the mm -hmm. first couple chapters will, you know, talk about, well, what is science? You know, what is, what is the origin of this word biblically, um, historically? Uh, what we're going to see is that a lot of the scientists throughout history, the most influential scientists throughout history, were Christians. And they studied science for the sole purpose of giving honor and glory to the creator God. So I feel it's just so important that we understand, you know, why do we study science and why is this important through a biblical lens? And then what are the two types of sciences? Because that's another area where students are often not aware that there actually is an observational science and what we call historical science. There's observational science where we use our five senses. We're doing direct observation. We use a scientific method, which is only possible because God created an orderly universe and we can make predictions because of that. And then we have something called historical science where we're looking at evidence from the past and mm -hmm. forensic science is very much a historical science. I mean, when I used to arrive on a crime scene, I did not see that crime occur, right? It is in the past. Right. It is unobservable in its original form, kind of like fossils, unobservable in the original form. So we see this evidence from the past. Yeah. We're going to use observational science to process that evidence. Mm -hmm. But all the results and information we glean from that, you're now applying to something that's unobservable in the past. So this is why you can have juries come to what's called a hung jury, where half the jury may believe someone's guilty and half may think they're not because it's, they're not looking at anything in its original form, right? They're just mm -hmm. looking at the evidence and drawing interpretation from that. And so it's really important that kids understand that before we just start diving into all the different um, forensic disciplines, because I just feel that's fundamental to what forensic science is. Mm -hmm. So then each chapter begins with a factual case study uh, that directly ties into the facet of forensic science they're studying in that chapter. Uh, so some of these case studies, because I feel it's really important you understand real life casework, right, and how it is yeah. applicable to what you're learning. Uh, and so uh, some of these cases are just famous cases, you know, some mm -hmm. of them still unsolved today. Uh, then there's some that are like the very first case in history where they ever used that particular discipline, because I think that's really fascinating to Absolutely. say, wow, forensic science actually goes back thousands of years, right? Because we can see this um, in history where they use a particular technique. They didn't understand everything we do today, but they mm -hmm. still recognize there were certain properties in place. And so I think that's uh, one of the most um, interesting historical aspects um, of looking at some of those case studies. And then it goes through several of the different disciplines of forensic science. Um, and then the last few chapters do end with the judicial system because that is so extremely important, right? Why are we collecting evidence? Well, we need to then present that in the court of law because the goal, right, is to convict a guilty person. And so it's important to understand, well, what, what is the court system, right? What, what is justice? How is the court system laid out between local, state, and federal? And then what is chain of custody when we look at evidence? And, and what is that process that has to go through? Who are all the people that are going to be touching this evidence before it ends up in court? And right. the integrity behind that. And then the importance of testimony. Um, I would say... Another thing a lot of people in forensic science don't realize when they first get into it is you're going to be spending quite a bit of time in the courtroom because right? you're going to be mm, yes. on the practices that you did on the field and writing mm. reports on that and, and all that that's involved. Uh, so there is um, you know, a section on you know, what, what that testimony looks like um, and some examples of actual courtroom testimony uh, provided in the lab manual. So the lab manual supplements the book. It does have different labs that they can do at home. It also has different types of activities. Um, each one, though, directly, you know, helps develop some type of skill that would be needed um, in that particular discipline uh, that okay. they're studying in that chapter. Mm -hmm.